So last time we briefly talked about, you know, what the contra sensitive function is. And today we're going to talk about um, how to measure the contra sensitive function. So um, to determine the um, contra sensitive function psychophysically, um, you have to select a spatial frequency of the grading to be tested. So for example, one cycle per degree. Um, in fact, um, to actually completely characterize a, a contrast sensitive function, then typically, you know, a five to seven or uh, well, five to 10 different cycles per degree sampled in kind of a a log step, so say 0.5 cycles per degree, a cycle, two cycles, four cycles, eight cycles, 16, and 32, and so on. So, so for each um, spatial frequency, um, you will determine the contrast threshold using one of the psychophysical method. So for example, staircase, um, you can do this with any um, psychophysical method like method of limits, method of adjustment, um, method of constant stimuli, and staircase. So uh, you can, you can you know really pick any um, psychophysical method to measure the contrast threshold per um, spatial frequency. And after you measure the contrast threshold for that spatial frequency. Um, then you're going to take the inverse of the contrast threshold to get the contrast sensitivity. So um, we're going to talk about this um, later on, but the threshold and sensitivity in psychophysics, they have um, a straight reciprocal relationships. So one over threshold, <clears throat> excuse me, you will get sensitivity, um, vice versa. So one over sensitivity will get you threshold two. So um, <clears throat> you just determine the uh, contrast sensitivity for that spatial frequency. Now you repeat this procedure for other spatial frequencies you want to measure the contrast threshold of. And then once you um, measure all the contrast sensitivity, for the spatial frequency you sample, then you can plot a contrast sensitive function um, where the uh, sensitivity goes to y axis and the spatial frequencies tested goes uh, go to the x axis. And typically, um, the both axes are expressed in log scale. So let's just take a look at uh, the previous exam. Um, question where you're given six different staircase uh, measuring the uh, contrast threshold. So um, from top left to the bottom right, we have um, different spatial frequencies tested ranging from half cycles per degree to 16 cycles per degree. And the staircase used here is two to one staircase, right? Because every two um, correct responses or every two positive responses, the contrast goes down, but the contrast goes up for every negative um, response. So this is the other two, um, two down, one up staircase right so the exam question is to draw a contrast sensitive function using these staircases so this question is asking you um, to see if you understood how to calculate the threshold when you are given the graph of the uh, two to one staircase or any staircase right and then um, also you need to understand how you um, convert this threshold into sensitivity measure. And then you should be able to plot uh, 
each sensitivity at each spatial frequency tested. So, um, to calculate the contrast threshold for, from each staircase, you have to find that the contrast at reversal points. So, reversal is the other where um, the direction of uh, the contrast um, presentation is changing. So, you know, from contrast going down to up, right? So, this is the uh, reversal points. So let's just uh, look at the um, the first uh, 0 0.5 cycles per degree staircase. So the contrast keep going down until here. So this is a first you know uh, first reversal. You know went up, and here is another reversal because from there it just went up and went down, and this is another reversal because the there is a change in the um, the contrast presentation. That, 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 that. So how many reversals do we have? So that's uh, one, two, four, five, six. All right. So now you have to find out the contrast at each interval. So. Um, so it looks like we have this first one is one point, I mean, point one to five. And the second one is a point to five, point one to five, point to five, and point oh six two five, and point two five. So we know this because if you look at the step size, so it starts, it started from the 0.5 and then the next one is midway between 0.3 and 0.2, which is 0.25. So from this, we know that the step size is octave scale, right? So um, when it goes down, the contrast is halved, right? And when it goes up, um, the contrast is doubled up from the previous trial, right? So that way, so that's 0.25, and then when it goes down, then it should be the half of the 0.25, which is 0.125, right? So that's how I know that this contrast level is 0.125. And it is just, it went up, it doubled up, right? So it's 0.25 and so on so this way you can actually calculate the um, the contrast at reversal points right so there is not reversal so you just add all these contrasts up um no sorry you have to um discard a first few reversals right so say i just discard these first two reversals and then just take the average of the last four. So there is no right or wrong answer in um, how many re reversals you need to discard, as long as you just mention how many you discarded, right? And it's just the first few reversals. So that is the last four re reversals you're going to take the average of. And then it turns out it is 0.172. So that is a threshold, contrast threshold for um, the 0.5 cycles per degree grading. So that's 0.172. So that's that, right? So now that I, you know, um, explained how to calculate the threshold for this staircase, um, I hope you can do the same thing for the remaining staircases and calculate the, uh, uh, the threshold like I did. And if you did, then these are the contrast threshold um, for each spatial frequency, right? And then if you take the reciprocal of all of these contrast threshold, then you get the sensitivity. So. Let me see if I have 
Okay, so there is calculator. So if you take um, one over two, but that's what you get, right? 5.81. So you just take the uh, reciprocal of each contrast threshold, then you'll get the sensitivity measure. So now that we have um, spatial frequency, so that's, we have spatial frequency here, and then we have corresponding sensitivity at each spatial frequency. Now we can draw a contrast sensitivity function. So um, in psychophysics, um, threshold and the sensitivity, they have a straight reciprocal relationship. So sensitivity equals to one over threshold or vice versa. And so that means um, the lower the threshold, the higher the sensitivity. And the lower the sensitivity, then higher the threshold. And as I said before, um, uh, these sensitivities or threshold um, often plotted in log, log, and scale. Now let's draw a contrast sensitive function. Okay, so here is our data. So we have spatial frequency um, of 0.5. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, and that spatial frequency in cycles per degree. Now, for sensitivity, let's just start from this is one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and this is C S um for contrast sensitivity and this is a unitless um <clears throat> so there's no unit for contrast sensitivity um so for um, 0.5 cycles per degree it's a 5.81 so it's going to be about here and then one it's about seven and for two 18 out here and four cycles per degree we have 34 so it's about here and then it goes down again 5.8 so it's about here and then 1.43 right so if we connect these dots then we have the contrast sensitivity function of this um, subject. So if we're to plot contrast sensitivity function using the contrast threshold values, um, you know, which are our original measurement as a function of a spatial frequency, then the shape of the function would look like the, uh, the graph on the left, right? So this is gonna looks like a um, U shape, right? The tick mark, right? But because we, we took the reciprocal of this contrast threshold, right? So that's why we get this inverted, you know, U shape, right? And so this shows um, a representative contrast sensitive function of a normal Observer, so we have spatial frequency in cycles per degree, right? And if you look at the um, the scale of the x-axis, this is in log because ten times every ten times have the same distance, right? So by the same token, you will have hundred. So both axes should be. Um, you know, log scaled, and then CS is on the y-axis, right? Um, the curve itself 
borders between seeing and non-seeing regions. So under the curve represents the area where the observer can see. So this is a resolved area. So any contrast, right? Any contrast here below this curve will be resolved uh, regardless of the spatial frequency, right? And then outside this curve, beyond this curve, is unresolved region. Okay. Right, so um, the, the, the contrast-sensitive function of normal observer picks around like uh, between two and four cycles per degree. So it's about, so that's peak sensitivity about two to four cycles per degree and then from this the contrast sensitivity quickly drops off to no sensitivity about 40 to 60 cycles per degree so this is uh, known as the high spatial cutoff frequency of human vision which is uh, basically the uh, spatial resolution limit and this is the finest detail um, we can resolve with 100 percent contrast and to the left of the peak uh, we can see a slight decrease in sensitivity so from this peak sensitivity you know, the curve goes down this way and curve goes down this way too um, so this is where um, our contrast sensitivity function is different from the modulation transfer function. So um, the optics, um, the property optics, uh, property of the optics, actually there's no loss in the low spatial frequencies, but unlike the modulation uh, transfer function, uh, we have a kind of a drop off in the low spatial frequency region too. So we lose our sensitivity to contrast in the um, low spatial frequency so um, this picture was developed by uh, prof Ismail zawa in um, um, the berkeley the university of berkeley in america to quickly demonstrate your own contrast sensitive function so in this image, the contrast of sine wave is modulated along the vertical axis, whereas the spatial frequency increases uh, logarithmically from left to right. So left of the graph represents low spatial frequency where uh, the black and white bars are wider and they're getting narrower and narrower to the right, uh, representing higher spatial frequency. And the contrast also varies uh, uh, in log scale uh, along the vertical axis from 100% to about 0.4%. So the bottom of the graph has the highest contrast and gradually blends into the background um, as you go up the graph. So if you connect the points where the grading disappears into the background across the spatial frequencies, then you will be able to see your own contrast uh, sensitive function so for me i can see that and um, the pattern kind of disappears about here um sit here and then like this um i don't know maybe Excuse me. Mm. So um, this looks like you know, my own um, contrast sensitive function, but um, I want you to you know try yourself to see you know, where. Uh, is your contrast sensitive function uh, on this picture. So here's a quick illustration to show the differences in modulation transfer function and contrast sensitive function. When the um, 
100% contrast image passes through the optics of the visual system, then there's a virtually no loss in contrast at the lowest uh, spatial frequencies, and the contrast loss is greater at higher spatial frequencies. As you can see, so there's really no loss around the uh, low spatial frequency region, but um, you know the loss is uh, mostly coming from the high spatial frequency region. Now, this attenuated image, um, after the eye is subject to further neural processing and the final output of the visual system is the uh, contrast sensitivity function. Um, routine visual, uh, visual acuity measurement in clinic is measuring the uh, smallest high contrast letter one can resolve which essentially measures only one single sensitivity on the contrast sensitive function at the uh, cutoff spatial frequency. So other than the optical limitations like refractive errors, uh, packing density of retinal photoreceptors affects the high frequency, high spatial frequency cutoff. So this is uh, illustrated in these figures. Um, so the figure A on the left represents a grating with a high spatial frequency and projected on a coarse photoreceptor matrix um, where the, the circle represents the photoreceptors. Um, and whereas the, the B uh, represents the same grating with the same spatial frequency falls on a finer photoreceptor matrix. So as you can see, um, the finer matrix would be able to resolve the grating because the width of the bars of the grating uh, correspond to the column width of photoreceptor matrix so that it can maximally respond, respond to the uh, contrast of the grating. On the other hand, um, the multiple bars fall on a single photoreceptor column in case of A, so the um, effective contrast will be reduced and it would be more difficult to resolve the grating for the um, photoreceptor matrix like A. So fulvial cones subtend about half an arc min in diameter, so if a grating falls on the retina like in B, then a cycle will subtend, uh, subtend um, uh, uh, one arc min. So such a grating has a spatial frequency of about 60 cycles per degree, which approximately matches the high spatial frequency cutoff of the uh, human contrast sensitivity function. Um, it is kind of unfortunate that contrast sensitive function is uh, rarely measured psychophysically in clinical settings because um, they don't have either setup or even with the setup it takes quite a long time to specify a full a contrast sensitivity, sensitivity function. For example, if you are to use, say, two to one staircase, um, it takes about three to five minutes to measure a contrast threshold per spatial frequency. So to characterize a full contrast sensitivity function, you need to test about at least five spatial frequencies. So it'll easily take about 20 to 30 minutes, which is not suitable for most clinical situations. So chart-based system has been developed to quickly assess the contrast sensitivity function in clinical settings. So here are some uh, examples of clinical contrast sens sensitivity function charts um, used in um, clinical settings. So um, two on the left is um, a low contrast log mod chart with uh, two different Weber contrast. So 2.5% and 1.25%. So um, the, the basic structure of um, the chart is same as the log mar chart, except um, that the letters are, you know, much uh, lower contrast compared to the, uh, the regular log mar chart. Um, what's on the right is, um, you know, Pelly Robson chart, which is composed of eight by six letters. And then, like, like in the, um, the regular log mar chart, um, the number of letters used is um, 10, 
and they're all Sloan letters of the same size. And they are actually a half a degree visual angle at three meters. So this is the size of, of, of about 618. And depending upon the uh, spatial frequency component of each letter, uh, the chart uh, test about like uh, between three to five cycles per degree, uh, which is basically the, uh, the peak uh, sensitivity. And each row contains two triplets of uh, the same contrast, and the contrast decreases by one over square root of two from top left to bottom right. So this figure illustrates the uh, relationship between some of the clinical acuity measurements and the contrast sensitivity function, which is represented by the red curve. So the optotypes on the bottom row are 100% contrast, typical of those used in a standard visual acuity test. So the smallest um, high contrast optotype that falls under the um, con contrast sensitivity function curve um, represents the threshold acuity. So as we go up, the optotypes diminish in contrast and the ability to resolve these lower contrast optotypes is usually not assessed in routine clinical settings, even though much of the uh, visual world is not 100% contrast. Here, a um, low contrast log mar chart consists of low contrast optotypes of diminishing in size, whereas the Pally Robson chart is composed of optotypes of all the same size but of diminishing contrast. So the Pally Robson chart is trying to determine the contrast sensitivity at the most sensitive spatial frequency, uh, which is about um, around three to five cycles per degree, whereas the low contrast log more chart will determine the contrast sensitivity somewhere in between the high spatial frequency cutoff and the peak frequency. So, um, say the low contrast log mar chart will measure um, this point on the curve, whereas the Pally Robson will measure uh, this point on the curve, whereas the, um, the, the regular, the standard VA chart will measure the cutoff spatial frequency, basically. So we've been talking about how visual acuity only measures the one point on the contrast sensitivity function and ignore the rest of the function. So on the other hand, what if a patient um, complains of a decreased vision, but when you test him, he can see 6-6? Six, six. So of course, as a clinician, you should not be too quick to dismiss his complaints. And perhaps he is experiencing poor vision as some other parts of the uh, contrast sensitivity function than the high spatial frequency cutoff. So in these cases, contrast sensitivity testing might provide better diagnostic information than visual acuity. But even then, the value of contrast sensitivity function as a diagnostic tool for various eye diseases um, is uh, still in question. There are different types of uh, visual acuities, and among them, resolution acuity is defined as the smallest separation between two features that can be resolved. It is this resolution acuity um, that is measured in most optometry practice. In measuring the resolution acuity, logma chart uses a discrete scale called the MAR, the minimum angle of resolution, which is equal to the width of one stroke of a letter. So by this convention, the size of 6-6 six, six letter is scaled so that the angular size of one limb or one leg of uh, the letter E or any other letters actually subtend to subtends, uh, one arc minute at 6 meter. Um, letter acuity is a kind of a resolution acuity because you should be able to resolve the gaps between the strokes of a letter, but at the same time, 
you must also identify what the letter is among other letters. So this kind of visual task is known as recognition. So letter acuity test, um, le uh, letter acuity test both resolution and recognition acuity. And as we um, you know briefly talked about before, there is a quite close relationship between the letter acuity and the high spatial cutoff frequency of one's contrast sensitive function. So if we know someone's visual acuity in snail and fraction, then we can calculate the expected high spatial frequency cutoff or vice versa. So let's say that your visual acuity is 66 and the letter here is representing the size of 66 letter. So assuming that the optotype E, um, so assuming the uh, total E as a grading consisting of the dark and uh, bright bars, then a pair of one bright and one dark bar comprises a cycle, right? So at six meter, by definition, a bar substands one arc minute. So that's one arc minute by definition, right? And a cycle is then, this is another arc mean. So a cycle to arc mean, right? So two arc mean is contained in one cycle. No, sorry. Um, so one cycle is contained two arc mean, right? And then there are 60 arc mean in a degree, right? So if we do this, then it just cancels to 30. And then that becomes 30 cycles degree, right? So if a person has a 6 6 vision, then its expected uh, cutoff spatial frequency will be 30 cycles per degree. And this is all you have to remember to. Um, you know, calculate the, uh, someone's high spatial cutoff frequency or the expected visual acuity, vice versa. So that, you know, the, the thing that you have to remember is that 6 6 vision corresponds to 30 cycles per degree. That's all you have to remember. So here is the question um, What is the expected high spatial frequency cutoff of a patient with 6 over 12? visual acuity because we know that 6 6 vision is 30 cycles per degree so for 6 over 12 it's just basically fifteen cycles per degree so that is the expected high spatial cutoff spatial uh, high spatial cutoff frequency for this patient. Easy, eh? Now, this is a reverse problem where you need to figure out the expected visual acuity of a patient from his or her high spatial uh, frequency cutoff. So, um, the frequency cutoff for this patient is 60, 60 cycles per degree, right? So, um, 30 times 6 over x, so this is unknown, is 60, right? So that's uh, how you set up the uh, equation. Okay, so you, um, so that's 180 over x equals 60. Therefore, x becomes 3.
right? So the expected um, visual acuity for this patient is a 6 over 3, right? So that's how you calculate the, um, um, the expected visual acuity from the cutoff spatial frequency. There are a number of factors affecting letter acuity. First, um, refractive error will cause the focus at the retina, so it makes uh, make letters blurry, losing fine details around the edges. Also, um, relative legibility is different from letter to letter. For example, it is known that capital letters C and O are more difficult to identify than L and T. Uh, spacing between the letters also affects the letter acuity. Identification of letters depends on the proximity of neighboring letters. Uh, maximum degradation in recognition of the target letter occurs at half a letter width between the target and surrounding letters, which is known as crowding or contour interaction. And another factor affecting the letter acuity is retinal illumination. So visual acuity is typically measured um, with a standard chart under a bright light condition, uh, which is mediated by cones. So the graph shows the relationship between the visual acuity in decimal notation on the y-axis and background luminance on the, on the x-axis. So the shallow curve at lower um, luminance, so here, um, has thought to be the rod response, and the stipper line here um, is the cone response. So these two red lines with arrow show the uh, maximum photopic and scotopic visual acuity. So for the um, scotopic visual acuity, it is a little less than 6 over 3, and or um, no, no, the, sorry, this, you know, photopic vision, photopic vision is little less than 6 over 3, and the scotopic vision is a little better than 6 over 60. And the contrast uh, also affects the um, letter QT, which falls as contrast is lowered. And finally, the eccentricity. Um, so visual acuity falls quite rapidly, as you can see from this graph. Um, so the visual acuity actually falls um, exponentially uh, with increasing eccentricity. So the letter QT is almost, um, you know, worsened twice um, at like around like a um, twice the foveal value at two degrees of eccentricity actually. Our discussion of visual acuity has been centered around the letter QT which is by far the most commonly utilized clinical, uh, clinical measures, uh, primarily because of their utility in the diagnosis of foveal disease and the detection and correction of refractive errors. However, other forms of visual acuity also provide useful information regarding the limitations of spatial vision. Vernier acuity is another type of acuity measuring the minimum displacement you can detect between the two lines. So for example, there is a very slight vertical displacement between the line A and B, but we can see that line B is slightly above the line A. So it turned out that we are very good at this and the average threshold for normal observer range is about two to 10 arc seconds, uh, which is much smaller than a single cone diameter. Because the, uh, this acuity is far better than you would expect based on the cone spacing, vernier acuity is sometimes called a hyperacuity. There is another type of visual acuity called minimum detectable visual acuity. And this acuity measures the smallest angular size of an object that the eye can detect. So the task in measuring this acuity is to find the minimum angular width of a line that can be detected against a uniform background. Essentially, the task is equivalent to contrast increment detection against background. The threshold is very small, which is uh, 
one-sixth of an arc min.